This is the Acer Predator Triton 300, and I'm doing my best to keep it clean here. It does pick up fingerprints and dust a little bit more easily than I expected. But uh, I want to give you my initial impressions. I've had this for a few days, and it's I think it's a really, really pretty laptop. I love this, this subtle blue that they use throughout the laptop, which I'll show you in a moment. So I'll give you a tour of the outside, talk a little bit about what I've seen so far in terms of performance, but this is not a full review that will come. I'd love this to be somewhat interactive. Like if you could leave some comments telling me what you'd like me to benchmark, I can do that. You know, to the best of my ability, I'll get that done you know, within a reasonable amount of time. So I got this on loan from Acer for review. I have to send it back you know, within a couple of weeks. So do your best to get back to me here soon in the comments. All right, so the quick tour. Uh, there's a couple things that I don't love just right out of the gate. So I am a fan of the blue. In fact, I think that this blue is more attractive than what Razer's doing with their green. I think the, the green is very in your face, whereas this blue is a little more subtle. But the kind of the problem is that it's not a consistent design. So that particular blue, you'll find a, it's really only found there and on the keyboard. In the exhaust grills, you're gonna see some other blue. I'll do my best to get in the camera here, but there's another shade of blue that's close to this, but it's a bit darker. Um, this, the lid isn't consistent either. This is sort of a, it's dark. It's like a really dark blue. I, I wouldn't call it black. And then back here you have, which I think will pick up, you have a bluish panel. And then right here on the lip of the lid, you have a bluish panel. Now, exhaust grill. So I'm going to do my best to get this in here. Yeah, it's not really pulling through, but you can see it on the USB. So on the USBs, you have that blue. There's two here, Ethernet, headphone jack. Then inside the grill here, you have another set of blue, which is a little bit darker than the one on the lid. I've got a couple more ports here. So we've got a mini display port. Haven't seen that in a laptop in a while. HDMI out, another USB-A and a USB-C that is not Thunderbolt. And on the back, uh, you know, it's a pretty clean back. It's it's nice and flat. The legs are not too ginormous, the feet rather. So that's cool. Now, when you one hand open this bad boy, you get to the keyboard deck. And I'm a really big fan of the feel of these keys. It's a chiclet design. It's not too loud. And I just love the key travel on this. I don't know the numbers, but I could tell you I've used a lot of keyboards. And this to me is very comfortable. It has a Kind of a short shift key, but you know, hey, they did squeeze in the arrow keys, which I don't use, but at least they did it, and you get the number pad, which I do use. So if that's the sacrifice, I'm willing to, to deal with it. Now, uh, the overall design is, is actually, it's really nice. It's pretty clean, if you ask me. It's not gonna be as flat and, let's say, muted as a razor blade or a MacBook, but Acer's got something going here that is their thing, and I applaud them for that. There's a nice, chromatic design around the trackpad that I think is really pretty and goes well with the rest of the laptop's design. How there's a concave, uh, concavity uh, on the chase of uh, the chassis for the keyboard deck. I think that's really cool. It kind of blends well, you know, highlighting this would have been really awkward without that border, I think. But the trackpad is a different shade of blue than any of the other blues on here, even the one here. <laughs> so there's some inconsistencies there. Uh, again, the keyboard's really nice. The backlighting is three zoned. I like how Acer just automatically thinks gamer, right? They, they go blue. They highlight um, with, I guess, a default out of the box. They highlight the, the arrow keys, the predator key, which allows you to turn on the, uh, it's a quick access to the predator sense. I'll talk about that in my full review. And then the WASD keys too. So they're going after gamers for sure with this design and you know, hey, that's a great market to dig into. Um, there is a turbo button. I, I haven't tested it yet on this device. On past devices, I feel like the turbo buttons just uh, create more noise than do anything else. And yeah, uh, maybe there's a small imp increase in performance this time, but last time it was just in, in the Treader 500 from last year, it was so insignificant that I'd even bother talking about it other than saying don't bother with it. Okay. Um, that's kind of it for the initial impressions. I should mention on the spec side. So this particular model, it starts at 13. Well, this model is 20, has a 2070 Max-Q from NVIDIA, an Intel i7-10750H CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 1080p display with a three millisecond response time and 240 hertz refresh rate. This one is $1,700, and, and I'm not joking, it really is $1,700. You might be able to find it on sale. That's a really good price for the specs. What you're not getting is a like really dialed in device uh, chassis, like I talked about before. I mean, you compare this to Razor Blade 15, 
The Razorblade 15 with the same specifications, which is actually this one, I have this one on loan from Razor, is $700 more. Now, it has run on sale from time to time. In fact, it was just on sale for two grand if you saw one of my recent videos about this device and its price, but you know, generally speaking, it's more expensive by 700 bucks. So there's, oh gosh, 800 bucks, my bad. So there's something uh, to be said about spending less money and being able to reroute that Delta for other things like getting a nice external keyboard, external mouse, a nice wireless headset. There's so much you can do with that extra money that uh, you shouldn't just you know turn off all consideration towards this device. There is something to having something like this uh, at this price range. Now, um, I'll do a full review, and if you have particular games that you want me to review, please let me know. I should also mention that there is a 1660 Ti model of this. It's 1300 bucks. I don't have it. I probably won't get it. Um, we're just kind of newly working with Acer here, so, you know, hey, if this goes well, maybe they'll send me that one too, and I can do a side-by-side -side or at least a separate video. But anyway, full review coming. Leave your comments. Let me know in particular what you want me to review and what you want me to test out, and I'll do that. Uh, no drop testing, though. All right, take care. Thanks.